Uh, I'm pleased to be here today with Rupert Pierce, CEO of Inmarsat, and Mark Eisenberg, CEO of Orbcom, to talk about the next phase of their long-term strategic partnership, including their groundbreaking global IoT service offering called OGX, which they announced earlier this week. Orbcom and Inmarsat have been working together successfully for nearly a decade to leverage their synergies and create opportunities to accelerate growth in the satellite IoT market. Today, we'll be talking about what Orbcom and Inmarsat have been able to achieve together over the last decade, as well as what the enhanced partnership looks like, what, cu what customers will see with the new OGX offering, how they will be distributed, as well as what the impact will be on the global IoT industry. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rupert. Uh, I'll get started. Uh, so the first question really, you know, can you talk about how this partnership's been successful to date and how much growth has been for IDP since the beginning of all common in Marsat's collaboration? Mark, to you, maybe? Sure. Uh, you know, since we purchased uh, Skywave in 2015, uh, the subscribers that are using that platform um, from WorkCom's perspective, because Inmarsat has their own base of subscribers. It's uh, it's it's roughly doubled, so it's uh, you know taken off uh, you know very nicely, and we continue to find new markets, new channels to market where we could be successful. We've uh, drastically um, you know taken cost and improved the product portfolio, the hardware that surrounds the business. We've created uh, you know new tools to, you know for developers to you know, create products on the business and, you know, we're just really starting to uh, deploy, uh, you know, dual mode applications as well. So, um, you know, I think uh, as I kind of look back at IDP, Skywave has, you know, certainly been one of our best uh, um, acquisitions to date and the, uh, you know, the partnership with uh, Inmarsat from Orbcom's perspective is uh, about as close and as good as it gets. Just to add into that, I mean, I think we're equally thrilled at Imasat with <clears throat> the last half dozen years of collaboration between Imasat and Orbcom. Um, first of all, uh, our subscriber count has gone up as well. It's gone up by a factor of 10 uh, since we started working hand in hand with, with Orbcom. Uh, so that's success on by any means. And But I also think it's been very exciting <clears throat> from the perspective of innovation and diversification of opportunities as well. As we've started to see the emergence of IoT as a massive global sector redefining the global economy. And uh, we've been delighted at the innovation that, that Orbcom has brought over the last few years. And today's announcement indicates we're just about to set off on another generation of innovation alongside Orbcom as well, which is tremendously exciting. And for us, I guess you can't talk about the last half dozen years without also talking about our decision to invest in the Imasat 6 series, which extends uh, the life of our global L-band capabilities, the foundation for uh, Mark and Orcom's capabilities for another generation, at least into the mid-2030s, which is tremendously exciting. It remains a unique asset. We've reinvested in that uh, for to provide global coverage and resiliency. We've also built in the Imasat 6s more capabilities to allow IoT to continue to grow in, in the unique and, and, and highly tailored ways that all commerce has been responsible for over the last few years, and no doubt will be responsible for in the next few years as well. Thank you. Uh, so can you provide an overview of the expanded enhanced agreement? Uh, you know, what are customers going to see going forward? Uh, you know, the, um, <laughs> this agreement is two years in the making. And, uh, you know, it started out as a extension of IDP and then the, you know, two parties took a step back to say, you know, all right, we're going to, we're going to sign an extension through a minimum of 2035. So let's just take a, a deep breath and understand not just what customers are buying today, but what customers really want, you know, over the next 20 years, uh, you know, how can we keep up with the customer's imagination and, you know, some of the assets that we're going to be monitoring that don't uh, may not even exist today. Uh, and, uh, you know, we really kind of slowed down that process and took a deep dive into, you know, how we can expand on this network. There are great things about IDP in terms of, you know, what a reliable service it is and what you can do with hardware. 
and you know just a couple of seconds of latency you know over satellite which is you know basically unheard of uh, but uh, as you look at uh, OGX and the uh, you know the the future where we're, we're kind of dreaming of a world of you know far higher um, you know bandwidth capabilities or bigger message packets uh, and uh, you know also you know imagining you know what we could do around battery power to uh, you know in, in our world battery is everything right uh, you, you know you're trying to make your uh, your iPad last uh, you, you know for a day on a charge I got to figure out how to track a trailer for 10 years <laughs> so uh, you know battery is very important so we, we we've also um, you, you know as a as, as a group have kind of searched out ways to maximize battery power you know creating uh, tracking devices that'll last three years on a double-a battery so we've gone in a couple different directions and you um, you know, as you, as you kind of look at the satellite industry, they've gone in a completely different direction. You, you know, if you look at some of these constellations, you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, hardware that costs, you know, thousands of dollars and looking to transmit gigabytes of data. That's not IoT. That's not IoT. So, um, you know, as you look at this next generation or come platform, how can you transmit a megabyte of data, you know, with a hundred dollar communicator? You know, that's the dream. And no one's been able to do that. You know, that does not exist today. It does not exist anywhere today, but it will. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how we um, we looked at it. So, so um, you know, you start with the product you want to build, and then you start working through all the satellite resources and, uh, you know, what MRSATs can have to do to support that network. And literally this um, contract starts with a bunch of engineers dreaming of what the service looks like before it gets to the business folks, um, you know, uh, you know, kind of contemplating what the agreement looks like. Yeah, I mean, to, uh, just to add to that, <clears throat> I mean, I, uh, for many years, uh, we've been very, very happy with all comms innovation around IDP, not just at the hardware and software and solutions level, but also the way they're being they're distributing that product into new markets for new applications and solutions in very customer intimate ways. You know, that that history is now moving forward in a very exciting way with OGX. As Marcus said, it's amplifying the product set in the IoT world, is adding an ultra low end device which, with incredibly long life, which is hugely important, as Mark explained. It's adding at the top end something at 40 times the speed of IDP. Uh, to which IDP installations can be upgraded over the air. So that's very exciting as well for the high-end stuff. Uh, and we mustn't forget that these products are also part of a suite of L-band products in which Immosat can also contribute as well, because at the end of that story lies our BGAN capability as well, which can do multi-megabit throughput as well. Less of an IoT device, more an IoT complement, but allowing us to provide together, or common Immosat together, a, a very a huge suite of products and solutions to meet the customer challenges out there. And I think it's by far the broadest uh, set of products and solutions uh, that anyone can bring to the IoT space, which is very exciting. But Immosat's contribution to this story is, is predominantly about our next generation network, the Immosat 6 series, the promises to support not just all those installed devices today, uh, those IDP devices today, but also OGX for at least another 15 to 20 years. And that actually is one of the things that sets apart the satellite industry in terms of its ability to support the global IoT sector. Uh, that in the terrestrial world, far too often, um, IoT customers are seeing their devices uh, go dark because networks are upgraded, 2G, 3G, 4G, LTE, 5G, etc. By contrast, we're able to support fielded devices for decades, and that's a huge discriminator that uh, all common MFAT bring to the market. And finally, I would say uh, MFAT is very proud to have the chance to distribute Orbcom products and services through our own distribution channels globally to complement what Orbcom does. Uh, we uh, trade in over 200 countries through a very mature 
distribution network in markets like maritime, aviation, government, and enterprise verticals. And I think our distribution capabilities, capabilities powerfully complement those of Orcom uh, and uh, extend the, the available addressable market for OGX. So in the context of that addressable market, uh, can you talk a little bit about which applications and customer segments will find OGX most useful? Sure. Uh, you, you know, to start with, uh, I, you know, you have your typical, uh, you know, satellite uh, uh, customers out there, the, the stuff that's hard to reach that, um, uh, you know, where, where cellular can't get to. Uh, and, you know, an awful lot of marine and earth moving equipment and rail stuff and, uh, you know, assets that uh, typically end up as far away from population as you can go. That's the historic satellite market, right? It's, uh, you, you know, it's a premium service that goes, you know, to places that are hard to reach, but that's not the dream for OGX and where we want to go forward. You know, the, uh, you know, the dream for OGX is to make this a mainstream product, you know, not just in some of these tertiary areas, you know, around the world. Uh, if you look at our ability for uh, multi-mode service, um, you know, for like uh, dual mode services for our oil and gas business, um, you know, putting it on, you know, standard products is, uh, uh, you, you know, when it kicks in as the unit leads uh, coverage or uh, in, uh, you know, difficult times during hurricanes, uh, keeping it as a backup for when one of these, um, you know, end of life uh, protocols in like a 2G or a 3G, you know, we want to, you know, make this a mainstream product and it was difficult to do because, you know, historically, you know, a dual mode application would double the price of the hardware and double the price of the service. And, you know, it, uh, it ended up being on, you know, maybe five or 6% of our solution subs. And, you know, since we've been able to, you know, make the uh, service so much more efficient from a satellite resource perspective, and get so much of the cost out of the hardware, you know, gee, what is 8% more coverage by you? Is it worth double? Well, you know, that may be a tough sell, but is it, you know, worth a uh, 15 or 20% premium? That's a mainstream product. So, uh, you know, we've uh, done an announcement for our satellite as an accessory product over the last month, which is the hardware aspect of, uh, you know, the, um, the agreement that we're talking about with, uh, with Marsat today. It's out in the market. It's uh, you know being fielded. You know, very exciting. Uh, but the idea is to bring satellite to the mainstream. Yeah, I completely agree with what Mark said. I mean, if you look at the the trends, the mega trends in in the in in the enterprise markets globally. Uh, you know, without using too many buzzwords, it's about autonomy, artificial intelligence, digitalization, data and analytics. Um, accessing remote nodes uh, for with with real and gaining access to their real time data and having a two way capability uh, to be able to digitalize your business it's it's key today uh, to remain competitive. It's also, by the way, a trend that in the world of COVID is accelerating as people realize they need to be able to have a more autonomous enterprise. So it's hard to think of an industry that isn't going to be transformed by the power of big data and digitalization. And what uh, OGX brings, it brings three key things in that arena. It brings coverage because, of course, with satellite, you cover the whole world. So you can have a, a one technology approach to the whole world and it's always on. So your devices are always on. They're always in coverage. Secondly, it brings resilience. And, and this is, I think, where OGX is so, and Orbicon are so powerful. That dual mode means that satellite, whether it's primary or secondary, it's always providing tremendous resilience. And when that data is mission critical, you can't be off either because you're out of coverage or because one part of your network went dark. And the third thing it brings is, is longevity. Uh, again, you can't, you, you, you can't be going out into the, uh, uh, into the field and changing out these devices every couple of years. So the power of, a, of an asset that can be left on out there for years and years at a time and a network that will still be servicing these devices in 20, 25 years is a very powerful proposition as well. So, yeah, we have a, we can look back in history and see many natural satellite markets that, that Orbcom and Imusat have served together for 
for um, half a dozen years now. But when we look forward, we see those characteristics of satellite expanding the market opportunity really dramatically. So I think you're going to see OGX going into many, many, many new uh, uh, markets and sectors uh, to provide those kind of capabilities to a digital world. And, and if I could just add one more thing to that, um, you know, Tim, uh, you, you know, in Marsat and Orbcom kind of started in this market, you know, in ISAT M to M. I don't know if you remember that product, but that product was in the hundreds of bytes. And if you look back in the industry, hundreds of bytes meant locations and alarms, right? And then uh, IDP, you, you know, brought, uh, you know, the Inmarsat service into uh, kilobytes of data and kilobytes of data got you into you know, many more locations. And it also got you into diagnostics and larger reporting. And now OGX is gonna get uh, Inmarsat into the, you know, into the megabyte range, you know, of data and think of the machines that, you know, that adds, uh, you know, as well. So you, you went from, you know, simple track and trace to, uh, you know, these diagnostics, and now we're moving on to these large machines, these solar turbines that need to be, you know, monitored closer to real time, mining equipment. Uh, as the machine gets more sophisticated, so does the, uh, the, the payload packet. And, uh, you know, those are the markets as well that we're going to be able to go after. Great. Uh, so can you talk a little bit more, Mark, about how OGX is going to work with the current IDP hardware and network services? No, no change. No, no change. We're going to be able to do that behind the scenes over the air. Uh, you know, so cool that, you know, all of this work and an another collaboration that we did with uh, Inmarsat is uh, if you look at the early um, IDP terminals, the early IDP terminals, the, the, um, the, the ASIC that we built, you know, used to be 200 uh, discrete components, you know, and that gets, um, you know, built into, you know, a $6 chip that is the core to our modem. Uh, and that is a project that we did together, a, a, you know, relatively large investment that was made over the, uh, you know, last three or four years. I mean, think of what, you know, less components means to reliability and what it does to, you know, obviously cost. And, uh, you know, that kind of really changed, um, you know, that really, really changed the dynamic of, uh, you know, you'll hear Rupert and I talk a lot about price points. We're believers in price points, uh, you know, and, and, you know, it enabled us to hit price points, but it also enabled us to make these changes over the air uh, where, where literally, if you want the, you know, to upgrade from the IDP to the OGX service, uh, you're, you're talking about a 15 minute process over the air. You don't even have to touch your, your unit. Just make sure it sees the sky as access to power. And, you know, wow, is that, you know, good for Orbcom in that <laughs> we have tens of millions of dollars invested into IDP hardware that needs virtually no change. I mean, we're going to continue to develop it and make it cheaper and add more functionality. Don't get me wrong, but the, you know, the basis of that modem needs no change because you can upgrade it over the air. Great. Uh, so you talked a little bit already about dual mode satellite terrestrial solutions. Can, can you just expand on their importance uh, for the OGX target market? Yeah, uh, you know, let me give you a great example. Our uh, our largest uh, user of dual mode service is is Walmart, and uh, you know, think of what Walmart does. They distribute you know food and goods across uh, America, but these are essential goods, right? Uh, you, you know, think of who their customer base is. They they operate you know drug stores. They supply food. They supply milk. They're in you know some. Uh, you know, very crucial areas where, you know, there's not, you know, a ton of support there, you know, for those populations and, you know, knowing where your product is, you know, 90% of the time, you know, doesn't work for Walmart. What works for Walmart is knowing where your trailers, knowing where your refrigerated assets, knowing where they are all the time. And then, you know, as the rest of the world is trading out from 3G to, you know, 4G, uh, you know, Walmart will, get to it when they get to it because they've got this, uh, 
you know, fully backward compatible, forward looking, you, you know, satellite service that's on board their, uh, their, their assets. So, you know, there is a, a, a great example of dual mode. Another great example of uh, dual mode is the work that uh, we do at Inthink where we're monitoring you know oil and gas drilling sites and pipeline and other things and uh you know some dealing with some scary chemicals and some scary products out there and you know you've got this very binary you know in coverage or out of coverage at the work site right so if, if your route is out of coverage you know for cellular it's out of coverage forever right you know or until they change the tower pattern over the next 30 years uh, you know, and these units just continue to work. It, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, Target or Kroger or some of these Orcom customers, you, you know, their refrigeration units need to work in the middle of a hurricane, right? You know, everything needs to work all the time, regardless of, uh, you know, what the backdrop is. And like I said, there's a price point for that. You know, I don't know that it's 100% premium, what you've been asked to, uh, you know, to pay in the past, uh, you know, in terms of satellite, but, you know, as I said, Rupert and I, we believe in price points and, uh, you know, we think we can hit some price points to get these things into the mainstream. Yeah, Great. I'd just like to, so, Tim, if I may, I'd just like to add to that. I, I completely uh, believe buy into Mark's compelling vision of why these capabilities are coming together. I think our world, the world of this famous digital society where we have smart cities, for example, uh, and smart transportation, smart agriculture, and smart mines, everything's smart. What they mean, what that means is the connectivity becomes an absolutely mission critical enabler of those networks. Uh, and we've got to reach levels of coverage and reliability and resilience that uh, uh, one network on its own is unlikely to, to meet. And uh, it, uh, we, we can't have our traffic networks go down because of congestion on a cellular network. Um, it's a different kind of traffic congestion. Um, so I think we're going to need networks of networks, what people call heterogeneous networks, with different technologies coming together to complement each other. And we completely buy into that vision as a satellite operator, and, and are very proud and happy to supply some of all comes needs here, recognizing that we may not always be the primary source, we may be the backup, but it's the complementarity that you get, the uniqueness of bringing these capabilities together that delivers an outstanding outcome for the end customer, which in the end is all that matters. Great. So, Rupert, uh, you know, can you expand a bit on how Inmarsat's planning to distribute all comes offerings? Yeah, well, uh, uh, we, as you know, um, we we have two massive assets in Emerson beyond uh, being a pure satellite operator. First of all, we have a very long established, very much valued channel, a set of channel partners, over 600 companies trading in over 200 countries in the world across our major market verticals of maritime aviation, government, and, and, and selected enterprise verticals like transportation, agriculture, uh, energy, media, and, um, and, and mining. And uh, we will be mobilizing that channel to go distribute OGX uh, and IDP uh, indirectly uh, to market. Um, that's been a very successful uh, relationship, part of our relationship with Common the last five or six years, as I said, in terms of our subscriber account growth. And we, we think this is uh, a very exciting part of our future as well. But more than that, we also have a significant direct sales businesses in maritime uh, and in, uh, in government. And again, we'll be pushing, pushing all comms products hard through our direct channels as well. Great. Uh, and can you expand a little bit on uh, how the OGX offering is going to impact Inmarsat satellite network strategy and how it will benefit from your new I6 satellites? Sure. I mean, you know, at, at its most fundamental, we really believe that the next 20 years will be the era of, of IoT. And we we're very, very confident that our global Elba network is perfectly placed to be able to support that evolution uh, for service IoT by satellite. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because we can get down to extremely small, very, very low cost devices that can be self-powered for uh, very long periods of time like OGX, but we can also scale up to devices the size of a laptop. They're a lot more expensive, but can move very, very much bigger packets. And of course we can also act as a hub 
by delivering anything, even even our KA band services for backhaul. So I think we have the range and cap of capabilities within our L band networks to support the IoT industry powerfully. This renewal of our relationship with Allcom uh, validates that and very much supports the uh, the way in which the MSAT 6 series, which will begin to launch next year, will be able to deploy their services. Um, what we're seeing, of course, at MSAT is a migration of our broadband business from L-band to KA-band, uh, moving from uh, the MSAT 4s and the MSAT 6s over to the GX series of satellites. Um, that frees up capacity in our L-band networks and allows those networks to reorient towards these new these new IoT services. So I think um, we're already on that journey uh, because obviously we made the decision around the MSAT 6 series uh, three or four years ago now. But um, this new relationship with Allcom is very much a proof point that um, we're both heading in the right direction. Great. So uh, uh, obviously it's a very competitive market. Can you can you talk a little bit about how you uh, believe that uh, OGX is going to be superior to competitive platforms. You know, it's it's funny you say it's a, a uh, you know a competitive market, but the competitors in this market <laughs> haven't really changed. Uh, you know, it's it's basically the same players that uh, Rupert and I were on the stage with, you know, an awful long time ago in terms of. Uh, uh, you know, at the satellite show, uh, you know, the satellite market has moved in a in a bit of a different direction. You know, and if you look at the new players in the in the satellite business, you know, talking about uh, you know doing um, you know L bands monitoring a trailer, uh, you know, being on a truck, uh, you know, those platforms aren't built for that. You know, I I, I, I um, got to look at the uh, you know the price points and the um, you know the the general size of the Starlink device uh, over the uh, you know over the last week, and you know they're looking at five hundred dollars just for the for the modem, you know, and the router. You know, it's it's really really large. It's ninety nine bucks a month, and you know it would last on the trailer about eight seconds. You know, in terms of battery power. So you know, I I don't think that the market is heading in our direction, but I I, I get the point of what you're saying. Uh, you know, there is a, a place in this market, you know, especially in IoT, where the upfront capex or the hardware that uh, you know these uh, resellers are looking for needs to be extremely low, but the um, you know the size of the data packet, you know, certainly needs to uh, certainly needs to grow. And I think if if you know, we kind of uh, we started this process where I showed Rupert a slide that shows. Um, you know, modem cost on one axis and throughput on the other. And, you know, we kind of showed like these bubble charts of, you know, where all the competitors are. And that uh, that that, that um, ratio of hardware cost to throughput is where this product really excels and is going to be really popular. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I mean, it's for Mark to talk in more detail about the competitive landscape because he's the tip of our sphere into the market, if you like. But um, we, we know who the competition are. It's very evident who they are. Um, and uh, it takes a long time to get into this business. So you do see your competition coming. Uh, you can't just uh, snap your fingers and be in this business um, next week. And trust is a huge factor as well because we're dealing with mission critical capabilities for very big companies that have brands to support and very nasty outcomes if things go wrong. So our track record is one of the things I think that makes us most competitive because people really trust MSAT and Orcom to deliver and that's priceless. But let's just look at the conventional things. You look at all the metrics, coverage, longevity, dependability, resilience, quality, we're number one. If you look at uh, the product sets, you look at the uh, getting down to the cheapest price points, best value price points, getting down to long endurance, getting up to big packet sizes. I think we win on every single one of those metrics. So we have the most scalable product set of any operator to meet almost any challenge that can be thrown at us by our end customer. And we can deliver those products at better value and higher outcomes than any of our competitors. So what we're talking about today 
is a genuine leapfrog by Allcom and Emmasat ahead of anybody else in a way that's going to be very, very hard for anyone to catch up to. Great. So to sum up then, uh, can you talk about what you think the impact of the OGL, OGX offering will be on the global satellite IoT industry uh, when we come back maybe in 10 years time to talk about uh, uh, another uh, renewal of your contract and uh, and where we look uh, to the future. I I think it's got uh, you know we have an awful lot of runway <laughs> before we get on our next call. Uh, you know this thing's going to launch in 2022, but uh, you know I I I think uh, you know this world of um, you know basically. Uh, you know, satellites, you know, being um, a significant premium to cellular and, uh, you know, being a product that you go to when, you know, there's lack of terrestrial choices, you know, is coming to an end. This is going to be a mainstream product that hits price points. And, uh, you know, I can't emphasize that enough. That is a, a big you know, major change in the uh, in, in the business. And then on top of that, th you know, one of the ways that this agreement is different with Inmarsat from the former agreement in the former agreement, we, we, we kind of co-owned IDP <clears throat> and we kind of went in separate directions. They went and sold it and we went and sold it. And, uh, you, you know, there was some replication around, uh, you know, what we were doing on hardware and how we supported developers and how customer service came in. And, you know, as we look at this product today, there, there, there's one offering, it's the same hardware and it's the same support. And, you know, we don't need to replicate, you know, all of those heads that support this product. And uh, I mean, think of what that does for the, uh, you know, for the scaling of these two businesses as we kind of unite along, uh, you, you know, this one platform, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I do think we uh, <coughs> will be moving quicker. <coughs> uh, excuse me, we'll be moving much quicker as a result of the refinement of our business model together. <coughs> but when we talk about the impact of today's announcement on the global satellite IoT industry, I think it's quite simply the right product arriving at the right time uh, to play into what will be a global IoT revolution in the years to come. I think what we're creating here, I believe, will be the gold standard reference platform for IoT by satellite for the next decade. And on the back of that, we will dramatically grow our businesses and dramatically diversify our businesses into a whole new slew of verticals as IoT becomes the norm for global enterprise and government activities in the 21st century. So I think this is a very exciting day for both companies, but it's also a more exciting day for all those who are looking for IoT solutions out there to be part of the 21st century digital society. Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great chat, and uh, I've learned a lot, and I hope the audience has too. Uh -huh. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for your questions. Very stimulating.